Now listen here, son. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about these test leads. These are what I would call our janky test leads or non-standard test leads. I'm not sure what the official term is. But in cases where we need to measure things like this, we don't have a clean connection to like a BNC or an SMA adapter on tools like our tiny SA. When we use test leads like this, non-standard test leads or janky test leads, what we want to do is we want to calibrate our nano VNA to take these leads into consideration. These leads can add something called reactance. It can either be inductive or capacitive. And that is the effect of an AC current at a particular frequency going through a transmission line. And it will adjust the way that our readings take place on our nano VNA. Let's take a quick look at our nano VNA and talk a little bit about our calibration and our reference plane. So when we typically calibrate an NOVNA, we connect standards to this terminal here and this terminal here, and this becomes our calibration plane. Anything that we add to our nano VNA in terms of connectors or transmission lines moves our calibration plane or reference plane, like in this case, our reference plane would be moved to here. Now we either have to two, do two things, we have to introduce electrical delay in our measurements, or we have to calibrate here. Now, sometimes when you add a little bit of coaxial cable or a connector, it really isn't that big of a deal. It's not that big of a difference. But when you start to add things like these non-standard connections uh, in terms of test leads, it can make a huge difference. So today what we're going to do is we're going to show how we can calibrate using these leads to cancel out any reactants that these leads will introduce in our nano VNA measurements. Stay tuned, and I'm sure you'll love it. Now what we have here are our standard standards, and we use these, they have different values, one's a short, one's an open, one's a load, one is a through, and we use those to set known measurements to our nano VNA. But because they don't connect to these alligator clips, we're going to use something a little bit different. For our short, we are just going to connect these together. For open, we're going to leave them open. For our load, we are going to use these 50 ohm loads that I made, pretty high class, right? And then for our through connections, we're just going to connect these to each other from each cable. Now I have these cables connected up and they're in line and we're going to begin the calibration. Because it's hard to see on the screen, we're going to calibrate this in Nano VNA Saver and then we're going to take a look at our results. Okay, so here we are in Nano VNA Saver and we're going to begin our calibration. Before we do that, I'm going to turn myself off so you can see the whole screen and perhaps it'll look a little better for you. Okay, so in order to do the calibration, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the lower left-hand corner. We're going to pick this button called calibration. We're going to hit that. We get a dialog box, and in this dialog box, you should be able to see here under calibrate, everything says uncalibrated. So the first thing we want to do, working with the cable that's connect to our S11 port, or channel 0 in my case, I am going to short these out. Let me show you how we do that. The procedure for shorting these out is pretty simple. All I want to do is open these up and I want to connect them together just like that and I'm going to set it down. Now we're going to go back to Nano VNA Saver. Okay, now that we're back to Nano VNA Saver, what I want to do is I want to hit this button down here for Calibration Assistant. And it's going to come up and it's going to say, hey, this is going to help me do this. And um, it says make sure you have all your standards available. We're good and we have a through connector for doing our two port calibration and we're okay with all that. So we're going to hit OK. And it's saying connect the short standard to port zero of the Nano VNA. Press OK when you're ready to continue. We've already shorted ours, so we're just going to hit OK. Now we're going to let this run for a few seconds. Okay, now that it's done, it's saying please connect the open standard to port zero of the Nano VNA. So let's go back into the overhead camera and you can see how we're going to do the open standard. All I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect our short and I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I'm going to go back in to Nano VNA Saver, and then I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, while this is running, a couple of things I wanted to mention I probably should have mentioned earlier, so I'm a little remiss in that. If you take a look in the upper left-hand corner, you can see our sweep control, and I set this prior to beginning this calibration. So our start uh, frequency is 6.5 megahertz, our stop is 30 megahertz. Now down here, I set our sweep segments to 100, which is a whole heck of a lot. But I did that because I wanted a small step size in between my data points. And here we have 2.327 kilohertz. Pretty small. 
Okay, now that that's done, it's asking us to connect our load standard to port zero of the Nano VNA. So let's show you how we're going to do that. And for our load standard, we're just going to use these two 100 ohm resistors. And then I have them wired up in parallel and I soldered the ends because I'm a professional. And this has given us around 49.8 ohms. While it's not exact, this isn't a NIST calibrated facility. And this should be close enough for amateur radio stuff, which is what we're doing on this channel. So there, I have my load standard in place. Let's go back to Nano VNA Saver. All right, once back in Nano VNA Saver, I'm going to hit OK, and we're going to let this run. Now, you can see as we go through the calibration, we are starting to move from uncalibrated to a calibrated setting. Here we have 10,100 data points, and that is a result of my 100 sweep segments timed the 101 data points were set up for on the Nano VNA. Okay, we're getting a pop-up message and it says our one port calibration is complete. We want to do a two port calibration, so we're going to proceed. It says if you wish to continue and perform a two port calibration, press yes. To apply the one port calibration, press and press and stop, I mean, press apply. So we're going to hit yes because we're going to proceed. Okay, so what it says here is please connect the load standard to port one. This is a different port of the Nano VNA. If available, also connect a load standard to port zero. And then it says press OK when you're ready to continue. So we have our load standard connected to port 0. And now it's asking us to connect one to port 1 or channel 0 and channel 1. Nano VNAs are labeled differently. So we have another set of connectors here. And it just so happened to have another load standard that I made. So let's go ahead and do this. And then we're just going to set this down. And then we're going to hit OK to continue. Okay, what it's asking us to do now is to please connect a through standard between port 0 and port 1. Yours may be called channel 1 and channel 0, the Nano VNA. So let's go back to the overhead camera and show you how we configure this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the loads. And then I am just simply going to connect these together. And I say simply as I struggle with it. There we go. Let's go back to Nano VNA Saver. Now that we're back in Nano VNA Saver, we are going to hit OK. OK, it's telling us that our calibration process is now complete and press Apply to apply the calibration parameters. Let's do it. OK, now that that's done, let's go back and see if we can evaluate how well our calibration worked. OK, so let's exit out of this screen. Now, there's a couple things I want to notice. Once we have our calibration applied, our Nano VNA is set up in a through measurement. And you can see right here, I can just move this data point. As I move it across the top right here, you can look in the marker one table. Specifically at our S21 gain, it says zero dB all the way across. So that means for any through measurements, we have completely removed any reactants or delay caused by the janky cables. And that's pretty awesome. So one of the other things that we want to take a look at is, let's go to display setup. And let's change this chart. And let's just change this chart from S21 gain to S11 VSWR. So it'll be an SWR measurement. And I'll show you how we are going to now change our cable so we can do this measurement correctly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect these. And I'm going to connect this load. And we know that this is probably not a perfect load, but we're going to connect it anyway. And then we're going to run a sweep that's going to test our SWR on our S11 port or channel 0 or port 0, depending upon your Nano VNA. So we are back here, and let's do a quick sweep. Now, as our sweep is finishing up, you can see that we do have some reflections as we go from 6.5 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. I'm going to suspect that this is because these are just cheap Chinese resistors, and they do have some inductance in them, which is causing that. And we can actually take a look at this on our Smith chart. So let me go ahead and pop that baby open. I'm going to go back down to display setup. And I'm going to get this and I'm going to change this from SWR to Smith chart. And when I open this, you can see that I'm immediately wrong and we have some capacitance that's introduced somewhere along the lines. But again, it's not that bad. If I go all the way down to the bottom, you're getting an SWR of 1.3. Uh, so it's 1 to 1.3. 
And that's okay. That's good enough for what we're doing in amateur radio. Now, perhaps if I had a better load, that wouldn't be as dramatic, but it's not really dramatic. So what I want to do now is I'm actually taking the load out. And when I take that out, this should be represented by an open condition on our Smith chart. So let's run the sweep real quick. Okay, and our sweep is done. Now, for a true open condition, our markers would be right on this horizontal uh, axis or equator, I guess is what you'd call that thing. I don't know. Um, but we are a little bit off. And again, I think this is close enough for us to get approximation or a good understanding or idea of the components that we want to measure using these cables. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the ground and the uh, hot lead and the center conductor and the shield. And then I'm going to run the sweep one more time and we should get a closed condition, which is going to be all the way over on the other side of our Smith chart. Okay, so now that this is run, you can see that we actually have a little bit worse of a situation here for our closed condition that we tested. Now, there's two things that you could do. One is you could buy better cables or you could buy better standards and you could run the test yourself. But I think what this does is it kind of shows or it highlights how we can get close to the measurements that we want to make using less than optimal lead to, uh, test leads. So anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. Totally appreciate it.